Hello, everyone. Welcome to the class. Um, so let's get started. So today we are going to work on our VM. Um, so let's go ahead and get that started. So to start up your uh, CVMs, um, we will get started with that. Okay. So you should, I think currently I'm starting my VM. Uh, you're currently looking at uh, Brightspace. Okay, today we're gonna work on the PKI, PKI B lab. And the goal will be to start looking at the algorithm. So if you remember the last thing we did, um, you know, lap before the exam was look at RSA, we started getting into the algorithm. We will come back to the algorithm, uh, more, more details about it next week on Tuesday, just to kind of get an intuition for how these work. Uh, today, we're gonna work on a little bit of that as well. Uh, these will be, uh, I'm going to provide some scripts for you. So the goal again of this class is not to learn a program, right? So you will, you either know how to do it or you will learn eventually. The goal is really to understand the programs themselves, but at the same time, I don't just want to give you pseudocode. I kind of want to see you run programs. And so that's what you will be doing. All right. So I will provide as much um, of this. Well, I think I've already actually provided these here uh, or maybe I have no here it is yeah here's one of the uh, you can see lab week for RSA problems so this is the one of the scripts the other one is so easy we're just gonna write it on the on the VM um, so then we got our crypto RSA here and crypto public key. So we got both of these and then we've got the Word document. So I guess I'm going to open up the Word document first since it kind of lays out what we're doing. All right, so I'm calling this one PKIB given that, you know, it's kind of half of the lab. The new version, so the seed labs actually has, has actually broken it up into two labs, which is funny. Um, so they figured, you know, what I was doing, it was taking longer than a week. So they broke it up as well. So it's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll look, so definitely read both read, you know, whenever I post two PDFs, even though they seem similar, what I want you to do is read both of them. Okay. And then usually in the word document or in the link somewhere, I'll specify which problems I kind of want you to work on. So for this one, you'll be doing, um, task 3.6 and 3.5. And I suggest that you do them in that order from the described lab there. 3.6 is the digital signature just using the open SSL commands in Linux. So that one you can figure out on your own, uh, especially because you understand the theory. That's the whole point that you should understand the theory and then you can figure out the commands for it and just, you know, in the with a digital signature is what we've been doing, you know, like the example I gave you of checking if the exam meets authentication and confidentiality. So you kind of have an integrity. So you kind of have to do all those things, all those checks based on the, the theoretical framework. So I have a question there. So for task 3.6, you must answer the following. How are integrity and source of the file verified in this problem? and what pillars are used and why. So you kind of have to address that. Then for task 3.5, based on the results from the script, and I'll provide uh, the script. I think it's already in the PDF also. Um, how long does it take to encrypt and decrypt the file using RSA? So here the scenario in 
is, you know, as you've heard me throughout the semester so far, I've, I've always said, you know, it's not just about how secure the encryption algorithm is, right? So it's not just about the security of it. It is also about performance, right? Because, you know, we don't want to wait for our Netflix movie to start tomorrow, right? We want it. We want to see if you pay for it today, you know, you want to see it right away. And so you can't have an algorithm that is extremely secure, but also extremely slow. And so you want to then look at performance. So today, what the goal of, of, uh, of what we're going to do is basically to compare. Okay, if we encrypt with symmetric encryption like AES or uh, DES, right? Versus if we encrypt and decrypt with RSA, you know, which one is faster, which one is slower. So you're going to have to create a type of an experiment. Now, as you know, the, the encryptions are really done really fast in fractions of a second. So what we have to do for something like this is you have to perform the encryption or the decryption 10,000 times, right? So if you perform it 10,000 times, you'll be able to measure the amount of time that it takes, right, for the you know, you'll have to, me you'll be able to measure it. So you'll get, you're going to perform the symmetric encryption and decryptions 10,000 times in a loop, you know, like a for loop. And then you're going to perform the asymmetric encryptions and decryptions 10,000 times again in a for loop. Uh, and then you just, you know, compare the performance. Okay. And that's really the goal to kind of convince yourself. So I can tell you right now, the result should be that symmetric encryption algorithms should be faster, all everything else being equal. So for instance, you're going to be encrypting the same document. You have to think about the size of the keys and that specifies it specified in the PDF itself. All right. But this is the one problem that should convince you that performance is important and that yes, it's true. Symmetric key encryption or block ciphers are faster than asymmetric encryptions. And so therefore they're the, the chosen uh, approach for actually achieving confidentiality of your data. And then when you're doing asymmetric, it's really mostly for key exchange of the initial symmetric key. So that's really those problems there, you know, on here. And then, like I said, I'm just describing them now and then I have to give you uh, a little bit of the description of the code. Then after that, uh, problem four, it's basically what we've been doing in class. This is really, I, I call this like a toy example. It's really you know, not even very realistic, but it, it will be an introduction of everything, right? A very simple kind of view of it as if we were starting to write things from scratch. Uh, however, you know, it's RSA is a little bit more complex. Right, and we haven't actually finished describing RSA yet. We will get to that in um, in a while. Okay, so that's problem four. So that that I'll I'll walk you through that one, and then problem five I think is the more interesting one. You know, now that you have completed problem four, try using a more advanced implementation. So that one I provided. Because of the complexity of the RSA algorithm, some functions are provided for you. For this problem, you will need the source code provided in Brightspace now. You need to write, you know, the generate keys function, and then you need to use all functions available to generate the prime numbers, generate the keys, encrypt and decrypt. So it's pretty much even though you're writing it in Python, the functions are there, you're just pretty much calling them. And then later on, I will provide, you know, we'll, we'll describe some of the details. The great thing about the code for this problem is that it is truly an implementation of RSA, like a full implementation, no libraries, no anything, you know, from scratch. So that for those of you that are curious about RSA to that level, you can take a look at that. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the most uh, efficient necessarily, or, you know, or best implementation. It's certainly something to kind of, you know, satisfy your curiosity. All right. So that's basically the handout, and that's what we're going to be looking at.
in this lab. So that's PKIB. Uh, then we have, you know, the PDFs, which I'll open in a second. I've already read, and this is the code that I was talking about. And then these slides, I will, you know, I'll cover these during the lecture later on. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> download some of these. So I'm going to download that one. And I'm going to download the code, of course. And I'm going to download this one. OK. So now that I've downloaded these, let's um, let's start looking at the PDFs. And then, as I said, we'll start looking at the VM in a second. <clears throat> so let me copy these. My dashboard. All right, so I'm going to open first one, the first PDF. Okay. All right, so let me share that PDF. All right, so now you should be seeing uh, one of the labs, Crypto RSA. I'm actually going to open up the other one too. Okay. All right, so. Let me actually share that one first. So I'm going to share. Well, you should be seeing it actually. Okay. So I think you're, what you're seeing right now is the one called Crypto Lab Public Key Cryptography PKI. So we're going to look at that one first. So this one you've all you've already solved task 3.1, task one, become a certificate authority. So we've already done, you should have done that already. And you should have completed everything until task three. Okay, then task four, we're not going to do that. Uh, instead, we're going to do something else for that. But here, these are the two problems that I want you to address, right? So task five, 3.5, which is performance comparison of RSA versus AES. And then also task number six, which is create a digital signature. So these should be pretty much just follow the instructions. Okay, and then you can solve the rest by figuring out the commands for OpenSSL. So start with 3.6. And then for this one, for task five, I will provide the, the code, all right, that we're gonna use. So we could always write, you know, shell script or we can write uh, Python script. So we'll see what works best. Now the other one, is the RSA public key encryption and signature lab. So I want you to read through this one as well. It's very similar. All right. Um, and you can see here, talks a little bit about the background, what we've talked about in the class. So definitely take a read through that one. For this one, we are only going to, because I, I'm actually going to give you that other script I have. So we're not going to do this in C. I don't want to do this in C. Um, yeah, so here, the, there's something in here. Yeah, we'll do this uh, deriving the private key, all that in, in the other script in Python. And so all of this will be in that other script. Okay. Now for the so for this lab, there's some some nice commands here to extract like the keys and take a look at them. So if you'd like, you can you can try these commands. As I said, I'm not going to make this an assignment. We're going to cover this later on in something else. So yeah, so. So this is a nice lab to take a read through, but it doesn't really, uh, it's not, it's not going to be required. Okay. So I'm not going to make this one required. So make a note of that, read through it, but I'm not making it a homework assignment.
you have to do so you so okay so the instructions that i gave before right the instructions that i gave like a second ago i said you have to go to the word document and in you have to read the word document and it says complete 3.6 complete 3.5 then you're going to complete this right and then you're going to complete that one so you have to for this homework assignment you have to do everything in the word document word document but the Word document references, so the Word document references these two PDFs. Okay, and I just said this one Crypto RSA, we're gonna do in, in another way, so read through it, certainly, but the main one is this one. Yes, everything is, so usually that's what I do. I'll provide some PDFs or, or something, but I will say either in the link or in a Word document, this is what I want. Because, you know, I like, you know, I could torture you by making you do everything in C++ or I can make your life a little bit easier by doing it in Python. All right, so now that I've talked about that one, we can go and take a look at the Python script, which I have here somewhere. And that one you will need to run in your VM, but I've already provided it for you. I'm not expecting you, as I said, to code anything from scratch. But let's go ahead and share the document somehow. All right, so now you should be looking at the um, Python script for the RSA algorithm. So as you can see, I, you know, I wrote lab RSA student problem, right? It's got some libraries. You can see all the functions are defined there. So for instance, I'll give you an example. The function get prime, what does that mean? It means that that's a function for generating that's a function for generating um, for generating prime numbers. You know, we've defined already what prime numbers are, so like 17, 11 numbers that are only divisible by one in themselves. But do you have to write the code for that? No, of course not. You know, I, I'm giving you a function and so you just use it. And then you have all these other functions that you really just have to use. Gen Gen RSA, generate public and private keys. This section to be completed by student. Basically what that means is you call the prime numbers, you multiply them, you know, you do the whole calculate N, calculate P, and then I've given you the functions to figure out E and D. So I'll help you with that. And then at the end of the day, I just want you to kind of look at how the real program works and to do some encryptions. I will ask you to do some encryptions, of course, uh, and that's really one main thing. I have the encrypt function there. There's also the decrypt. Okay. Um, so that, you know, that's the idea. So we'll have an encrypt function, we'll have a decrypt function. And you notice here that you provide some of the parameters, right? You provide some of the parameters here. Uh, that are the, the, the parameters are always E, D, N, P, you know, and the prime number. So that, and also the message you're trying to encrypt and decrypt, but the functions are there and they're provided for you. And then to be completed by a student, this section to be, you know, so I will provide the hints. I'm not gonna, now I'm, these are not, I don't like to do demos, right? So I'm not gonna do, I'm not just gonna demo things. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna give you ideas of how you can proceed, but again, you're, I'm not asking you to write the functions from scratch. I'm actually, I'm making, basically I'm asking you to make function calls. All right, so that's the code for the last problem in that Word document, okay? All right, so that's basically it. So we talked about, a little bit about the code, introduced it. And now we are going, and I've talked about the two PDFs. Hopefully that's clear. All right, so I've addressed everything on the right space. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things we're gonna do. 
Well, I'm going to switch over to the VM, which I have open here. And so I need to share that. Okay. So you should now be seeing my virtual machine. So I'm just going to open up a terminal. Okay, so I'm opening up the terminal there. And you can follow along if you'd like. Right, but basically, I'm going to navigate to the desktop. So here we have, you know, this is where we're going to start looking at what we're going to do in this lab. All right, so. So we've gone over the theory of RSA, but I haven't finished that yet. So we haven't finished that yet. All right, so in this lab, All right, so we'll start with just a simple script uh, for the for that problem. All right, so this is the toy, the one that I reference as the toy problem. Okay, so we're just going to implement the code for that one, kind of a warm up there. So I'm just going to call it, you know, toy RSA dot py, and so basically here we're just going to define our little program. Okay. All right, so let's start uh, by doing this. So I'm going to, we don't really need any libraries for this. It's just something that we would do from scratch. But usually we're going to have, you know, functions like encrypt, encrypt, okay, and then we're going to have another function decrypt, okay, and then after that we need to make, um, or make our main function calls here. So we're going to the, the basic logic of this, as, as you probably know, is that we have some kind of a message, right? Which, you know, here the message is just the number that is given to you in the problem. I don't quite remember if it's seven, but it could be. And then you will take that message you have the encryption key, right? And you have the modulus, okay? So then you do, you wanna create a cipher, right? So you're gonna take encrypt, and encrypt, and then you're gonna do um, message, comma, the encryption key and n, right? So you have to compute those from the problem that I gave you and then basically just plug them in. It's, it's really that easy. Okay, and then once you do that, you can print um, the cipher. You can print it. And then you're just gonna, you know, basically perform the opposite of that. So now you're gonna do uh, plain text again, plain, which is going to be decrypt. Decrypt, it's gonna take the cipher. Now remember, you're gonna use the decryption key, 
comma n, right? And then that's going to give you your plain text message. And you just have to check that the values come out as you expect them. And that's basically it. As far as this problem, now we just need to define what encrypt and decrypt are in these functions and, you know, all the other parameters you can just provide. So if you're going to, I believe in that problem, I gave you P and Q. So you have to, you know, P times Q, which means, you know, a couple of prime numbers, P, um, you know, figure it out, you know, just use the one provided, Q, right? And that's, that's pretty much it. Now, the encrypt function, as we defined it in the, in the lecture a week ago, we're at the indentation. Uh, you can just take um, plain, oh, sorry, cipher equal. And now you're going to do message. Right, you're gonna raise it to the power of something. So this is, you know, raised to the power. So message to the power of encryption key. Okay. And then you take that and you do the modulus operation, which is percentage, right? So in Python, that's the modulus operation. I believe I already described what modulus does. It gives you the remainder of a, of a division. All right, and then once you do this, so you do modulus n, okay? And then once you've completed that, you're just going to uh, return that value, of course. Four, I'm gonna do return five. Now I can do the same with decrypt one, two, three, four. And really all I have to do is plain, okay, plain cipher raised to the power of, and now it's gonna be the decryption key, okay? And modulus, again, all right, so that's the general structure. Um, so this is the general structure of um, of writing a pipe, you know, of writing a the RSA, the simplest, a toy, a toy example of the RSA encryption and decryption algorithm. Okay. So that's all you. That's basically all the pieces. Now you just kind of have to put them in order. And, you know, kind of, that's it. I mean, that, that will pretty much complete the problem for you. Okay. Are there any questions about this one? I don't think so. Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty straightforward. I agree. All right. So now the, the next one is a little bit, I, the one I showed you that was a little bit longer. That one, of course, had... Um, a little bit more, and a little bit more detail. And so I'm going to open up, close this. All right. And I'm going to open up another script. I'm going to call this one, uh, what was that one? Call it, um, yeah, well, more complex, I guess. Um, I don't remember the number, but let's say more complex or more realistic RSA. PY. Okay, so we can do that there. Okay. So in this one, you had several functions in there. 
And I'm just going to really talk. I'm not going to go into all the details of the code, but I'm just going to describe some parts of it. And actually, I can make these comments in the in the in the other documents. So let me share that one instead. All right. So you should be seeing the the code for this the, the other problem. Okay. So here you'll have to make some modifications to this code. Okay. But I'm I'm pretty much going to lay out the structure. So you don't really have to change anything with the libraries. Okay, you don't have to change anything here. That should work. You don't really have to touch get prime. It'll just work. You just have to call it. Now here in this function, pay attention to these things um, because some, some of the variables are intentionally like mixed up so that you, you figure out what they are. But Basically, this function in, if you notice, it's got something called the extended Euclidean algorithm. So when we were talking about uh, doing the algorithm, when we were talking about the algorithm last week, I mentioned that we had this relationship. D E mod B equal one, right? So you guys remember that? And, I, and basically, I kind of showed you and where that DE, remember, it's really D times E. So basically, this function in, and in particular, this idea of the extended Euclidean algorithm, this little algorithm is what solves that equation. Okay, that's what solves that equation. So really, you can, you can think of it as, you know, that EEA, the extended Euclidean algorithm, is what actually you know, you use this algorithm to get those parameters, okay? In this function, notice how it takes in <laughs> PQ, but those PQs are actually uh, the E parameter and feet, right? So they're not PQ, the prime numbers. Instead, the, num the values that you're going to plug in there are E and feet which you should know what E and P are, right? You remember that this function that I'm highlighting here was to figure out D, okay? And so given that you already had E and P figured out. And, you know, the way that it's done is by this. Now, it is outside of the scope of this class to go into what the extended Euclidean algorithm is. However, you know, I encourage you to read through it and, you know, if you notice, if you look at this code and you read through it, you will see that it's, it's literally an implementation of RSA from scratch. No libraries, no abstractions of any kind. Everything is there. And so you can literally understand the algorithm by understanding this code. All right, so that's the first thing. I added the comments here so that you're aware of what the parameters are. Okay. Then in gen, gen RSA, what I want you to do here is to perform some of the tasks that, that we performed before, right? The things that you would have to discover. So okay, so here we have um, in Gen RSA. We're going to, and it's very easy, really, right? So what do you have to calculate? You have to calculate phi. I mean, you should know. By the way, gen, in Gen RSA, I do want to clarify that in Gen oops, RSA, in this one, P and Q are the prime numbers. So these are, in fact, the prime numbers. Okay. Then you're going to use those to figure out, okay, what is phi? You should know how to do that. Okay, you're also going to, um, you're also going to figure out n, which in this code is sometimes called mod. Okay, so mod, you should also know how to figure that out. I'll just specify here that mod is And so that the N in, in the formulas that we built up. 
Okay, basically what you, what you end up with is, and you remember that whenever you're calculating the public and the private key, what you're trying to figure out is E and N, right? For the public. Key. And for the private, you're trying to figure out D and N. So that's what you're trying to figure out. Now, as it turns out, the values that are really important are D and N. If you notice, N over here is really an important number. And these numbers are public. The one number that is not so important, as it turns out, is E. Most of the time, people just use some standard set of known E's. You know, there are some E's that for efficiency are just well known to be, to work well. That doesn't affect anything because the private, the, the, really the N is gonna be unique to the prime numbers that you use, right? So you're gonna use some unique prime numbers because you don't want, you know, people, one of the, the key thing, and we'll talk about this let, uh, next week, uh, the key thing about RSA is that it's very easy to compute N from P and Q but it is very hard to give an N to find out P and Q. And you use really large P and Qs, as, as we will see. That's one of the points of this lab, is to, is to look at that. But again, performance is affected once the, 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 those values start getting big. So for efficiency's sake, E is actually sometimes just a standard number, and it's really the N that's pretty important. So given that, we're going to say here that given that this function should generate the keys, right? It's called gen RSA. We're going to say for efficiency, for efficiency, researchers have concluded that three or 65537 can be used for the E without problem. Given that N should not, you should not be able to figure out N from P and Q, or actually P and Q from N. If you were able to do that, then you can break the whole of RSA. All right, so given that then, now that we know that, we can just proceed and do an if statement that we say if mod, where mod is n, right, is less than 65, 537, okay, one, two, three, four, then we're gonna say return as your answer return and you're going to return the values okay you're going to return sorry, a tuple here of three values which will be three comma inv of three comma phi based on the algorithm that we learned last week, and mod. Okay, so what are these values? Let me add a comment down here, and I'll just say three is E. The re in three phi returns, as you might imagine, already said, D, right? If you look up, in is that function, right? And I told you it's basically this one. So given E and phi, you derive D, given the algorithm. And that's what's happening here. So then you get D and then mod should be, well, N, right? So you, you, know, you, you know that. And you know how to calculate it as well. Now, however, your numbers are probably gonna be bigger than you know, that number. So in, in that other case, we can use the other E. Let's say one, two, three, four. 
and I'm going to do return. And what I return is this time, not three, but 65, 537. We can use that E. It has been determined to be fine for an E, given that the N is really what matters. So, and I'm go also going to need to calculate the D given this set of numbers. So that's going to be inv 65537, comma, uh, phi, okay, comma, mod or n, right? So that's, and I'll just write it as I did with the other one. I'll kind of just write it. Um, so this one is E, this one is D, this one is N. All right, so that's pretty much what you're doing there. And that's it, that's, you know, as simple as that. That gives you, basically at this point, this function returns your public and your private key. You just have to build it from those three parameters, build them from those three parameters. Then as, you, as we start scrolling down, you can see here you have various utility functions and these are very helpful to convert from text to int, int to text, int to list, list to int, you know, the mod size, et cetera. So a lot of these you can just use and they'll be very, uh, very handy. There is a formatting issue here in uh, one of these functions in mod size. There is, you know, as Python changes from Python 2 to Python 3, uh, I think if you just plug in a zero there, that should take care of the problem. Right. As you know that those are format string parameters, so you're just defining the format string, how it's going to appear. Okay. Just double checking that this is correct. Yeah, so I think it's correct. All right, now that we have that, we make that correction, we can move on to the encrypt function. So again, I'll add a little bit of a comment here. So you know how to use this function. Maybe I should add an answer. So now, you know, obviously P text, you know, probably should know is the plain text. That's what that means. PK is E, okay, the public key really E, all right? And then the mod is N, right? So that is your public key. Just by looking at it, you should know, oh, that's my public key. Now I want to show you something um, in the function encrypt. If we scroll, the, if we scroll through the function encrypt, and you see this statement here, pow, all of that, that's really a much more efficient way. It is a much more efficient way of writing pow. Uh, AUX1, comma, PK, mod, or yeah, modulus, and then mod, or N, right? So this is the exact same thing that we wrote, it, wrote in the previous script. So I want to show you, if I go to the VM, and I'm going to switch here, but if I go to the VM, right, you should, you should be seeing my VM now. And if I open toy RSA, you can see that where, where I wrote these message to the power encoder key percentage N, you see that there, right? There's what we wrote and you've seen that in the problems. So now if I go back and share that document, that's the same thing. Same thing, just more efficient computationally. This also could have been written as pow is just a function to the power. This could have been also a 
that, you know, like that, but it makes it less efficient. And so instead, we are using this function, which takes in the, th takes in the three parameters, okay? So it's x to the power of y modulo z, right? That would be the, the way that, that you do it. All right, so I wanted, I wanted to kind of underscore that so that you know where in the code you have that, that function. Everything else is there to help you, you know, to deal with the text so that you guys don't have to actually deal with the text. But at the same time, try to understand the flow of the algorithm. Are there any questions so far? No? All right, so seems like there's no questions. Okay, right. So then the same thing apply as you might imagine for the decrypt function over here. Where's my cursor? I've lost my cursor. Okay, I don't know where. But oh, here it is. All right, so just like we did here in the encrypt function, right? We do the same in the decrypt. You can see there's the pow, but now it is the SK, right? So we're using a different parameter there. This is going to be my decrypt function, same idea. You will use that. Oh, it, it takes, oops, understand. The decrypt function takes, well, the cipher, probably know that. Let me write it. Cipher, then this SK, you should now be able to figure out that is the D parameter. And then here it takes P and Q, right? Which are the N basically that you will need. Okay, so the that you know, n equals p times q, but you know that. All right, so those are the parameters that it takes, and then you're able to do the decryption. Uh, again, you know, there's a little correction here. Just add a zero for the format string. You might have to play with that depending on the version of Python that you're using but I think that should fix for most versions. All right, so now what do I want you to do? Um, that that kind of addresses all the functions. You can see, look at how very few it is, right? Look at how, you know, RSA, although it's such an incredible, powerful, amazing thing, and certainly people have implemented a lot more to it than this, but here we have an actual working version that's pretty good. And we have get prime. We have the function for you know getting the extended Euclidean algorithm, right? For getting this, get the gen RSA, how to generate the keys. You have a few helper functions here and there. You do have the encrypt and decrypt functions, and that's it. And then after that, you just have to now make a call. And now you just have to make a call to those things and perform some encryption. All right, so I'm, that's what I'm going to help you with. Now, um, so let's see, what do I want you to do? You know, you can create some test cases, but you're going to take Obviously, some prime numbers, P1, P2. I already explained how you get these. Right? You call the, the get prime number. Now, the trick with this is that you have to specify the size. So, for instance, if I say, you know, P2, let's say here. So, I'm going to do get prime, use that function. But the function needs to have, needs to know, the size, okay? What is the size that you're going to provide to this? So let's say seed size, right? And then over here, I'm gonna specify that I want you to try some of these, right? So you're gonna try some of these. You're gonna try 256, 512, 1024, 
2048. All right, so you're going to try those different sizes and you're going to report performance wise, you know, how long did it take and all those little details. All right. Provide a some kind of a text message that you're going to encrypt. So, you know, your plain text should be some string. So just, you know, make up a sentence. Okay. And you will encrypt that. You're going to proceed to encrypt and just follow the procedure. So I think I've given you everything that you need to complete this lab, so it should be pretty straightforward to do. All right, are there any questions? Not at the moment, I don't think. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that's it. It, it, it. This just shows how to do RSA. You know, we're always doing everything with OpenSSL, but it's nice to see how the algorithm actually works a little bit more. So, uh, that's what that is for. Okay. Now let's take a look at give me a second here. Now the, the next problem I want to address is in that PDF. So if I so I'm done with this one. I'm gonna switch back to Brightspace now. And we're gonna think about, so you should be seeing Brightspace. Uh, we're gonna think of this problem and how to do it. So I want you to convince yourself that performance wise, this one. All right, task five, performance comparison, RSA versus AES. Yeah, so you have to do what, what is said there, first of all. So I want you to um, read that, of course. But I want to help you out a little bit with the script on how to perform that encryption efficiently. So I'm sure you could easily write the Python script for this, but help you out a little. Let me take a look at this. All right, so Now you could write, as I said, you could write that in C, you can write it in Python, you can write it in, uh, in Bash. And I think it might be better. All right, I guess we're going to write it in bash. I think that that is in your book. I'm not sure if, but I believe the script is in your book. I was looking in there and I thought I had seen, because if it's in your book, I don't want to to give you this and I'm looking in chapter anyone know what chapter this is it's in your book And all right, so it would be chapter 
Yeah, 23. Let's see. So I, I thought I saw that script in there. So, in, in, so definitely you should be reading chapter 23 of your book, right? It explains the RSA algorithm in a lot of detail. Take a look at it. It's got, it's got more examples. It talks about performance. I saw that. It only talks, I guess, about the OpenSSL speed RSA. But it does not. Okay. We'll do this. Uh, what's in the, you know, using the Pi Crypto library. We're going to use that later on. Okay, so I guess it's not in here. I thought, I don't know why I thought I had seen this. All right, it's not there. So let's just do it then. All right, so I'm gonna go to the, to the virtual machine. So remember, the goal is to run these three algorithms and um, generate, calculate the time, okay? So a couple of ways that you can do this. One way is, uh, I'm gonna call this performance RSA. Um, just so you know, we, we can't see what you're, uh, what you're typing. We still see Brightspace. You still, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Well, let's switch to the VM, All right? So you should be seeing the VM now. So a couple of ways that you can do that problem for performance. One is, you know, you can write a Python script. And the, the, the key things that you will need is uh, something called subprocess. So subprocess is a function that allows you to make, so basically what you would type on the shell is what you can just also type in the script just by typing in subprocess. Okay, so an example of this is, you know, uh, subprocess. And we will see how to do this a lot when you take 372, because we're going to run a lot of scripts for automating sysadmin. And then you can do here like the commands that you would type. So you guys know ls, if it's ls comma dash l, then you would type ls dash l basically. So you, you like provide all the parameters in a list and then you just run this command and it'll run, um, it'll run that. So if I, you know, if I wanna do uh, an example, copy here, Control X, Y, right? And then on here, I'm just gonna start up Python, the Python interpreter. And then I'm gonna do, I believe I probably need to call import sub process. Yeah, it's there. So now I'm gonna run that. So I'm gonna run that command. And has no attribute run. Oh, it's maybe try call. Not wrong. And there you go. So it, it was called. So basically when you do that, you know, you, you it's, it's literally like you're running the ls-l command on the terminal. So if I exit out of here, I exit out of that and I just do ls-l, same thing. You see that? So, so, that's a good way because what you're doing is you're doing this, right? You're doing open SSL, RSA, and so on, or you're doing open SSL, AES, and so on, and you provide all the parameters, and you know, I want to, you know, 
in is plain and then out is you know whatever uh, cipher so everything that you're doing there you're just going to provide now as parameters so i'm going to go over here and i'm going to open that script again performance Right. And then you would do, you know, in the script, you have to write like import, import sub process like that. And then you know, this will be called now. Call, but you would, you know, you would change. I'm not going to give you the solution per se, but I'm just going to say in a comment, obviously you would do something. You would do something like this um, call and then you can even make it a little bit more it's a list command so it's a little bit more like clear for yourself and then here you can say list commands and then you specify okay well I'm gonna be doing open SSL and then you know some flags dash in and then the name of the file, plane, right? And so on. So you'll have to figure this out, but it's pretty straightforward, et cetera. Right, so that's, that's the idea, that's part of it. So that's how you do some commands. You need to encrypt the same thing. So follow the instructions that are given to you in the problem, right? The, the, the only key is how do you run it? So you do the sub process call, the other thing you need to do is obviously you need to do some kind of a, a for loop. So, you know, you, you know, for, so encrypt, what I said is encrypt each, each method a thousand times. So do for I in range, and then just do actually 10,000 will probably be a better number. So it gives you, and then here, one, two, three, four, you would call sub process. So actually you would call this. that there, like that, right? So you would call that here, sub so process, list of commands, and then this will be, you know, this is for the AES, oops, AES, right? So I don't get the comment 23, it is 27. Did I make a typo or something? Oh, chapter, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about the what chapter the stuff chapter was in. 23. Yes, definitely. Um, so all of it is there, definitely read that chapter. But so again, hopefully you understand what I'm saying is you'll have to do this three times, right? So you'll have to do this three times, one for and, and just follow the instructions on the problem. What we can read through the problem in a second, but I'm just showing you the, the basic idea. Now, to measure the time, what do you need to do? You just say something like, you know, import time, right? And then you're gonna say here, well, start time. And I'm just gonna take time. And I think it's parentheses. So then once you do start time, once you finish the for loop, you've executed all 10,000 times, then what do you do? End time, right? Pretty straightforward. And then what do you say again? Time. And then, well, take the difference between the two, right? And duration of AES, let's say. I think that was AES. So duration of a AES, just going to be end time minus start time. And that's it. And that will give, and then print it out. So it's going to give you some kind of a number. And then you perform this operation again a second time, but with the other algorithm. But remember that at the end of the day, the goal is to compare symmetric encryption to asymmetric encryption. So that should be your goal that you're trying to achieve. All right, are there any questions about this?
No questions? I don't think so. Okay, great. No questions. All right, so that is the script uh, for performance. So I pretty much, we've done the toy one, we've done the performance, we've done the complex RSA, and the only one that I'm leaving for you to figure out, because you should be able to do it by now, is the digital signature. Remember again, all of these commands are in your book, so you can just also take them from there. Okay, so, so that's the four problems. Mm. Making sure I'm not missing anything. That should be everything. All right. So Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. So if we look back at the problem, so now everything should make a little bit more sense. Um, so now let's go back to the problems. I'm gonna control X here. Can switch back to Brightspace. It's this one. All right, so we can look look at the problems now again and put put everything back into context. So we look at the Word document, right? And you have to complete 3.6 digital signature, then performance. I just gave you the script for that. Then you have to basically implement this algorithm with these parameters. I, I gave you the code for that. It's the simple toy RSA. And then finally, I explain all the code, the more complex, more realistic uh, problem, problem five, which is to perform encryption. And again, you're gonna measure a little bit of performance and just do a more realistic type of an encryption of a sentence. Okay, so that's your lab for this week, PKIB. This is uh, assigned now, and this will be due one week from today. So you should be able to finish this really quickly, actually, I should say. I'm gonna create now the link for the assignment. So we're just gonna call this PKIB. Oops. PK, PKIB. And this will be a, will be due one week from today. Today's the I guess it'll be due on the eighth by eleven p.m., which is ten p.m. Central. And and on the tenth. And then I'm going to say here, just complete all the problems in the attached word. Okay. Are there any questions about this? Is this clear enough? Yeah, I think so. All right. So the link is created and you can start working. <coughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. You can start working on your lab right now. Um, I don't believe I'm gonna give any new content 
and just instead just work on your lab and then if you guys have questions go ahead and please ask make sense yeah i'm, I'm, I'm gonna turn off i'm gonna pause the video now so that given that i'm not really doing any content i'm just gonna answer questions i'm gonna pause it uh on um on Tuesday, so we will continue with our discussion of the RSA algorithm. Please finish your homework and you know I'll see you guys next next week. So have a good weekend. Thank you, you too.